Hey guys, it's Shades here. Welcome again to Shades of Soapbox. So it's time to talk about an aspect of piracy that I didn't really touch on in my last video. Fan subs. When a foreign show is not available to audiences outside its native country, fans of said show will often create their own subtitles to help fill the void. For decades, this was how many classic anime were finally able to be seen by non-Japanese audiences prior to the advent of streaming services like Crunchyroll. But as more and more content has been brought to the West, fan sub sites have become less and less necessary, and more and more fan sub groups have gone the way of the dinosaurs. And now, another genre of Japanese television is on the cusp of a similar fate. Tokusatsu. For a little over a decade or so, fan subs were literally the only way to watch series like Ultraman, Super Sentai, and especially Kamen Rider. While we've had adaptations in the West like Power Rangers, Mass Rider, and Kamen Rider Dragon Knight, those who wanted to experience the original stories had to rely on fan subs to see them. But recent events have changed that. Recently, sub sites like TV Nihon, Overtime Subs, and others have been forced to remove all of their fan subs of Toei's Toku properties, causing a massive uproar in the community. The thing is, I kinda knew this day was coming, though even I'm surprised at how soon it happened. See, up until now, Toei had clearly been aware of the existence of these sites. Hell, both Bandai and Hasbro got caught using TV Nihon subs and promotional material for Power Rangers, so there's no doubt word got back to them. But most companies adhere to a simple policy when it comes to fan subs. As long as it's something not legally available in the country it's for, and the site isn't making a profit off of it, we'll pretty much leave you alone. This has actually worked out well for all sides, as it exposed these series to Western audiences, who in turn have bought the relative merchandise, keeping these franchises funded. So it was a win-win for everyone. But over the last few years, there's been a change in the winds. Super Riot Productions, who own the Ultraman franchise, had been trying to bring it to the US, but several license issues from the past made that a bit of a challenge. But when they eventually cleared those legal blocks, they began streaming Ultraman on different platforms, and even releasing them on DVD and Blu-ray. At the same time, companies like Shout Factory have worked their asses off to finally bring Super Sentai to the States, starting with Juranger. With successful sales of these DVD sets, along with a growing voice from the Western fandom, eventually Toei took notice. With a Q&A from executive producer Shinichiro Shirakura finally making it clear to him there was a Western market for these franchises. Sure enough, over the last couple of years, they've worked with Shout Factory and another company, Bluefin Brands, to bring both merchandising and streaming of Sentai and Rider-related material to the States. This all culminated with the release of Toku Shoutsu, a 24-7 streaming service showcasing Toku shows to US audiences. They also began streaming several Common Rider movies on YouTube, and they also opened up their own YouTube channel, Toei Tokusatsu World, where they've since added classic Toku episodes for all to see. And then, just about a month ago, as part of Common Rider's 50th anniversary, they took it a step further, announcing a Western Blu-ray release for the recently completed Kamen Rider series, Kamen Rider Zero One, along with both it and Kamen Rider Ryuki being added to the Toku Shoutsu lineup, and have also been adding the first two episodes of Heisei and Showa-era Kamen Rider shows to Toei Tokusatsu World. This has made it clear that Toei is finally opening the floodgates for US Toku, a clear indication our voices were being heard. But this would inevitably come at a price. Now, those fan sub sites, once the only way to see these awesome franchises, are getting in the way of Toei's new revenue stream, since it would make no sense to release all these awesome Toku shows legally if people could just watch them for free through this form of piracy. And whether you want to admit it or not, fan subs are a form of piracy, just one that is considered a bit more of a gray area. Don't worry, I'm not here to say all piracy is bad, as I've made it clear in the past soapboxes that some forms of piracy are understandable given certain circumstances. But to say it's not piracy at all is a lie, and these companies have a legal right to shut these kind of sites down. It's actually more of a moral question. Is it a good idea to try to deny people access to your content if the only way to do so is by less than legal means? This is where the debate on social media has been focused. See, fans aren't simply mad because these sites got shut down. Honestly, when I looked on Toku Twitter, the real complaint I was seeing was that there was currently no way to watch many of these shows in their entirety without these fan subs, and now that's been taken away. Obviously, Toei plans to eventually release these shows in some capacity, but as it stands right now, there isn't enough of it out there to justify ending these sites. If more than half of Kamen Rider and Sentai was available through legal streaming, even if the subs weren't all that great, 
looking at you, Toku HD, with your horrible subs of Agito and Fies, at least we could understand why we no longer needed fan subs out there. But right now, only a quarter of Sentai series have been released on DVD, and only five or six Kamen Rider series tops are available for legal streaming, far less than what any sensible person would call adequate. Toei, let me level with you. I get it. You want to be ready to make Kamen Rider viable in the US. This is obviously quite the investment and you want to make sure it's worth your time and money. We don't fault you for that. And we are grateful that you're even giving us the chance to legally watch these amazing shows here. But your draconian practices have soured our opinion of you. And that is the last thing you want right now. Many of us were already not happy with your DMCA abuse on YouTube. Hi Easy and Deshinta, how you doing? But now you're making it hard to expose your franchises to even larger audiences. When the time comes, we'll be happy to support your work by watching legal streams. Hell, if you found a way to simulcast the current series as they were released in Japan, we'd be all too willing to go all in on it. But that hasn't happened yet, so all you've done is made it more likely that other sites will quietly pop up to continue the work groups like TV Nihon and Overtime started, only with likely lesser quality, making it harder to enjoy this work for now. The solution is honestly simple. Either allow these groups to work unimpeded until such a time where it's unnecessary, TV Nihon already had a policy that any show that was licensed would be removed, so eventually it would have reached that point naturally. Or, if you want to speed things up here, hire them. Obviously, this would have been a further investment, but I'll bet you anything that if Western fans heard you were working with the fan subgroups that helped make all this happen to begin with, that olive branch, and knowing the translation quality would have been at a level of quality they've come used to, would have made fans far more willing to accept the changes, leading to a much bigger return on your investment. When a fan base's love for a franchise is returned by the company that runs it, fans will become even more loyal. There have been numerous examples of this. Hell, take the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. When fans cried out about the initial look of Sonic, the studio heard this, and despite it pretty much closing the studio who made it, they made changes to make it look more like what fans expected, and the fans responded to that by making Sonic a successful movie, with a sequel on the way. You don't have to cater to all of our requests, but if you at least make some effort to listen and respond to feedback, we will appreciate that. Bottom line, this is a rough time to be a Western Toku fan. Things may improve, but goofs like this will make the transition to legal streaming and sales that much harder. Toei, all I can say is, since you've gone and taken down our only way to currently watch Toku in the US, please make it worth our wait. If the subs you provide for the upcoming Zero One Blu-ray are handled well, and if you're willing to provide us with more, then we may forgive you. But if you and Shout Factory botch it, you may very well lose the very fan base you're trying to court over. The ball's back in your court, Shirakura-san. Let's see what you do with it. Anyway, that's gonna do it for me here today, folks. I'm The Shades, and we'll see you next time. Rock on!